Welcome back to part two of the Sandy Mel collaboration. We are going to be doing some portraits today. Um, if you haven't checked out part one, please go and do that. I'll put a link on this video here, hopefully. And yeah, catch up and see what this project is all about. Today I'm going to be trying to get to grips with water-soluble crayons on black paper. Now a warning for today is that you are probably going to be seeing some ugly art. I'm not going to lie, this was really tricky and I am going to be producing some work which I'm not proud of and I just want to warn you that it is basically a hot mess. That's the term that Sandy would use and actually I think it's quite a good term to use so bear with me as I work out this medium but I thought it'd be really great to, to show you the process, show you that not everything I produce is worthy of going on a wall and that when you do work on with a new medium you definitely encounter um, ugly bits and pieces that you're not happy with. I heard the phrase that if you want to produce good work then you have to produce a lot of bad work along the way. So this is one of those times. <laughs> but I thought it might be worth you seeing how I work through it and what I end up with as well. Over to past Mel. So I have marked out all of the colours on the black card. I also decided to try the Dewent Intense pencils. Some of them come out quite nicely, others you can't even really see. It's only that's a fuchsia. And then I also had some Luminance pencils from Garen Dash. And that one's a random graphite tint. So I really want to work on another portrait like this, but a bit more considered and take a bit more time over it. So this was another sketch that I did and I really quite like the line. This was left-handed, so the line is a little bit more wonky. But I'm going to just now use this reference and the one that I just showed you. blue so using man strange right jumper stripy jumper eyes look kind of scary eyes look like they're on fire. So weird not actually looking at a reference photo and <laughs> just working from your drawings. Just keep going with it. <sighs> I don't even know if I'll be showing this but bits of it that I like but I think I've just got too tight with it and also the wonkiness that I would have liked there is doesn't feel like it's there anymore so I've tried to rein it back in so I feel like I'm gonna have to do another one and I also think I chose too many colours so I'm gonna try and not choose as many colours and try to be more loose. All right, so let's see how I go on. Okay, I'm holding the pencil at the top and I'm also standing up to draw. And I'm deliberately making the eyes wider. Yeah. Okay. 
okay, this feels more loose <laughs> and quirky and wonky. Great. stop. Okay, so yeah, I used one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten colours and man, I am so much happier, so much happier with this one than this one. <laughs> she even looks scary, doesn't she? So I think, also this one took half the time, so even though I thought that actually spending more time would give me a better result, this one is so much better than this one. So I think the key was to keep those eyes apart and not try to tighten the pastels and also keep it to a limited colour palette. Man, I love this one so much more than the other one. So what I really like about this is the, how the grey kind of gives the shadow Then you've got a few different pinks and then the yellow gives it a little bit of warmth and then those red lips really pop and I love the green eyes. Yeah, so we've got the darker grey here underneath the shadow and then that really warm yellow which was used here. It's also used here and then highlights. I can't tell you how happy I am with this piece. It is worlds apart from the other piece. And now looking at them side by side, I'm just um, embarrassed by the other piece. <laughs> Um, hopefully though I can remember some of these things. I think I'm going to do another one though, another face and work from this one, the colours that I really like and see how we get on. Face is a little bigger on this one. Really kind of zoomed in to the face, so you can't really see the clothes.
So you'll see that I've done quite a few different portraits now. Some of them work, some of them don't work. But what I've tried to do is I've just tried to keep going, keep persevering with the material. So what I've really learnt about using these water soluble crayons is that I need to have a light touch with them. They do not work if I overwork them. So if I try to gain too much control, they do not work. If I try to blend or add too many layers or colours, they also do not work for me. It all depends, I guess, on how you want your work to look and what the finished result is. And for me, I really love the texture that the crayon produces when you are holding it loosely and you have the black paper showing through. To me, it almost feels like a little bit like a lino print. The next thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be changing up my subject matter a little bit and do now look at the background and objects that are in Sandy's room. And I will be drawing and working out what objects I want to include in my final piece. I can't wait to show you what I have been producing and what is coming up in part three. Coming up in part three, you'll see me working on the final piece. I'll be sharing the process behind the composition, why I've decided to do it in this way. And you also see the influences that I've taken from Sandy herself. We'll also have another Zoom chat with Sandy and she will be sharing her first responses to the work that I've produced. And we'll be chatting a little bit about what we've learned through this project. So guys, make sure you go and check out Sandy Hester's YouTube channel. Go and find the video that she's also done part two you will not be disappointed you will find it probably a lot of fun to watch go check it out and i'll see you again very soon <laughs>